A commentary on Sleepy King and shape relationships by me. So, disclaimer, this is not hate on Sleepy King in any way. It's just my opinions and critique on how they draw their characters and um, their new style. Obviously, if you like their new style, that's um, entirely up to you and you're allowed to like it. And Sleepy King is allowed to do whatever they want to do with their art. I just wanted to give my two cents and give my own commentary and what I think could be improved. So if you don't already know who Sleepy King is, um, he's basically an artist who also animates on YouTube and is pretty big, I would say, in the animation meme community. Um, <clears throat> a couple of months ago, he made a video called Do You Suffer From Same Face Syndrome, in which he talks about same face and shape relationships um, within characters and he talks about his drastic change in character style now i applaud sleepy king for tr actively trying to improve their art with techniques such as shape relationships and i think that's um a good uh, mentality to have as an artist however i do think that some things can be uh, improved upon uh in their usage of shape relationships so for my first point, uh, I'm going to point out their overuse of shape relationships. Shapes are convenient to use in character design to quickly convey an archetype or stereotype of a character. Yes, but there is such a thing as too much. Um, if you take a look at some examples in media, I'm going to use um, examples from Steven Universe. Uh, so take this sapphire and ruby. Sapphire has soft, round shapes to convey her delicate and soft nature. And ruby, a fighter gem, um, is created of box-like shapes, which shows the viewer stability and strength within the character. Um, and another character, Peridot, who is an antagonist in the beginning, um, is made up of triangular shapes not only to show uh where her loyalties lie which is with the diamonds but also perhaps her need for precision and her uptight nature so we have round shapes square shapes and triangle shapes but what makes them work on these characters is the subtlety the shape relationships of a character should not be all that a character relies on or um a character should not rely entirely on the shape to convey their personality. Uh, Sapphire, for example, is not entirely made up of circles. She also has a few boxy shapes. She has some points within her uh, the design of her dress. Ruby has soft edges even though she's made of squares. And Peridot, a villain, uh, probably has the most dynamic use of shape in her design as she goes through the most change out of the three. She is made of triangles, yes, but they are paired with uh, rectangular shapes. Now if we take a look at Sleepy King's new style, um, you can see that they have a round character, Cal, uh, a square character, Alfred, and a triangular character, Mystery, which uh, is pretty simple, right? But when you look at them, everything about them has become a shape relation. Mystery now is an amalgamation of sharp angles and lines, and Alfred is completely made of a box-like shapes, and Cow is like entirely like, like a cloud, basically. So when you don't have relationships between characters, it makes it hard to compare them to each other. It's just too much. Like, look at the feet on these characters. There's no reason to make Alfred's feet literal boxes because a character's personality does not rely on their feet. Primarily, <clears throat> we're going to see the upper half of their body, so that's where design matters most. In things such as feet or hands, I would say keep them consistent throughout characters just to show that this is what a hand uh, in my universe looks like. Here's a really good example. 
Um, these are the characters of Gravity Falls. They look as if they can exist in the same universe, yet still retain shape relationships that are dynamic between characters. You can see this especially in Dipper and Maple, who are twins. Uh, so obviously they have to look alike. But Dipper is more analytical and down to earth than Mabel is. So he's given very structured box-like shapes within his clothing. Mabel, who is more happy-go-lucky, is given soft, rounder shapes in her sweater and also in her hair. You don't need much to tell your audience who they are. You don't need to give Dipper square feet. When you use subtlety, you can have a wide range of characters of all types of shapes. Seuss is inarguably made up of more soft shapes than Mabel. Therefore, we can infer that he is even more fun-loving and uh, pure. Wendy has the same box relations in her hat as Dipper has, but she has sharper shapes in her chin, nose, and hair. So this shows she's more of a risk taker, more of a rebellious teen. Grunkle Stan has the same ambiguity as Peridot did. He has boxy shapes, but he also creates triangle shapes with his person in the way that he poses. He's a stable figure within Mabel and Dipper's life. He's their grunkle, he's their caretaker, but he's also a con artist, and he also keeps a lot of secrets. He's a dynamic character. They're different where it matters most, yet we still have similarities because, well, they're all humans. The hands are relatively the same, because hands amongst people look relatively the same, except in size. Their shoes all look like shoes from this universe. The only character that is literally made up of all shapes is Bill Cipher. 2. Falling Flat While well, the old style had same face, it worked as a flat style. It was simple, easy to read, it was cute and it worked for animation. I think it worked for the purpose it served, uh, such as uh, animation memes where you could make them in a quick amount of time, which helped with YouTube's algorithms not being very uh, animation friendly. It's just not uh, feasible to make a video uh, every week if you're animating complicated characters. With the new style, However, I do think there is a certain dimensionality to be desired. Uh, with a more complicated style like this, obviously the space they take up is going to be more complicated and you want them to be able to turn it around in space and make them look three-dimensional. Uh, you can get away with this in flat styles like the old style because people know that it's it's meant to be flat, it's meant to be more cartoonish, but if you're going for a more complicated style, you're going to need to be more dimensional. Now it doesn't have to be, you know, super 3D with like shading and all that, um, but going back to this Gravity Falls picture, you can see that they still retain a flat cartoon style but they don't look flat. This is because of how their clothing wraps around their bodies. And you can especially see this when they show the underside of Wendy's boot, or if you look in the collar of a Mabel sweater. Another good example of this flat style is in Villainous or Villanus. Some of the shading gives dimensionality, but it's also in the posing and in the way the clothing looks more realistic in the way that it adheres to the body and wraps around the body. Now if we look at Sleepy King's OC Alfred's sweater vest, there's no indication that it's wrapping over the shoulders or around the arm. I think that uh, with time, Sleepy King can improve upon this since he's only recently transitioning out of a flat style into a more dynamic style and you know I don't fault him for you know, having these sort of clashing of styles because it is a transition period and I understand that. Number three is a lack of basis on reality. Now I know that 
cartoons aren't reality and they're not supposed to have realistic proportions it just it depends on what you're going for for example all of the cartoons i've listed had fairly tame proportions and they're all based on realistic proportions of humans uh other cartoons like the amazing world of gumball uh, adventure time or like phineas and ferb among others tend to heavily stylize their characters and you just can't compare them to real life however with these heavily stylized styles the design of the character tends to be pretty simple in order to convey this outlandish proportion more clearly we can be more detailed with human proportions because we already know what a human is supposed to look like and therefore we have the capacity to take in more information about that character. However, you have to be super clear with your shapes if you're going to have a more dynamically proportioned character. A pet peeve of mine of Sleepy King's new style is the fact that the shapes on the face don't seem to be attached to any fixed point on the face. For example, the mouths or sometimes the nose will appear as if they're floating off of the face and this just makes it more complicated to look at and it doesn't make it seem like a very solid or dimensional character. Now I don't know what Sleepy King is going for, obviously. I don't know what they want out of their style and maybe that's part of the problem. The communication between the artist, the art, and the audience is crucial. It's basically the whole point of art. If you're going for realism, you have to study it. You have to at least study the human face. And if you're going for stylization, you can't stylize something that you cannot construct out of your own head. Well, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. I don't know if Sleepy King is going to see it. Uh, it's not really addressed to him per se, more like just something I wanted to get off my chest. And it's my opinion. I think people who find fault in a person's art and comment about it aren't haters, except if it's outright hate obviously, but for the most part they're also concerned fans, and you can choose to agree or disagree. Obviously an artist can't please everyone, uh, but I hope you take this advice to heart. Even if Sleepy King doesn't see this, I hope uh, it can help other people understand shape relations a bit more. If you have something to say on this topic, I'd like to hear about it in the comments. If you disagree with me, uh, why? And if you agree with me, tell me why. But um, otherwise, I'm gonna go. See you later. Also, I'm sorry about the botched job on these sprites. I was really too lazy to make a full set and to like color them in and everything, but I hope that my message got through anyway. I really didn't plan on making uh, this sort of video, and I don't know if I'm gonna make them in the future. I don't know, <laughs> I really don't want to make a habit of making just <laughs> rant videos or anything, but I hope that I can provide some constructive criticism.